everybody has those crazy edible stories. Um, I've, I've got a few of my own. Those things are scary. <laughs> Talking about, I caused a scene in, in Sicily. And oh, no. <laughs> what is, okay, well, now, now, now you got to tell us about it. You got you to tell us about it. <laughs> oh, my God, Joanna, you, uh, you start because I was out of it. I, I had my chemically induced psychosis. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can definitely no, that get was, that from one of those no, gnarly edibles. No, no, that was. <laughs> did you? Did you not? Did you not have? Did you not have uh, any idea like what the milligramage was? And you know, I, I think well, it was a, a sublingual, so the bioavailability was already quite high, just by taking it that by that route. Um, Joanna, that was your buddy who brought that over, so you could maybe talk more about the dosing. Um, but I even remember you saying, "I'll give you less because it is strong." And then I, I think it also had a, co a combination to do with just um, just being exhausted. I was actually escaped to Sicily because I was in the middle of writing my PhD thesis and I little needed a break. So between a little bit of sleep deprivation, sun, alcohol, well, no, there's a little, at that time I was sober. Um, and a little bit of uh, cannabis too, that, that kind of was the recipe. And I ended up I ended up fainting too in I'm, out there. I want to interject <laughs> yeah. in here. Yeah, because so, there's different perspectives and memories to the story. Well, so I was like, sure. <laughs> so one of the things is in Italy, people are really nervous about cannabis. Like people will smoke a spliff. They'll have their hashish. They'll add it and roll their own cigarettes and they do it that way. They thought I was the crazy American that was just smoking cannabis. Like that was crazy to my group of friends. So when we go to Sicily, I just traveled with my oil that a guy I'd been dating in California had sent to me. And so I had some, you know, Sonoma County cannabis oil that I had been consuming. And so that's what I brought. And I knew Monica didn't have a high tolerance for edibles. So I'd just given her a little bit, but we were out in the sun on the you know, hanging out on the Mediterranean Sea, learning the art of doing nothing. And we didn't eat a bunch. We go clean up, we go to dinner and it's still hot as balls. And we <laughs> crack open some Prosecco and it was the addition of then introducing alcohol into her system. And I think it's right around the time where it was going through that, you know, second phase of metabolizing through her liver. And so I just started watching her face. Like I could tell something was happening and her, her eyes rolled back in her head and her head kind of dipped back a few times. And our Italian friends didn't know what was going on because they didn't know that we were consuming cannabis. So they think she's joking around. And I'm like, no, we have a serious issue here, people. So it's super hot. I am trying to get her up and take her to a bathroom. Unfortunately, it's up a set of stairs and through a crowded outdoor restaurant full of people. And we don't even make it up three steps before she is just passing out. And I just hugged her and rolled over onto the stairs and like <laughs> laid her down next to me. And so then <laughs> that's like most days still. <laughs> and this was, and this was all from ingesting it, right? This is all yes. from, so, so by the, by the liver metabolism, you're talking about the Delta nine to 11 hydroxy scenario when yeah. you eat, right? Yes. Yeah. I learned that you know, I am, some people, you respond to different cannabinoids in, in a different manner that depends on our, our endocannabinoid system, uh, for, for myself and many other women that they've found in studies are a lot more sensitive to 11 hydroxy. Um, and, and now, you know, it does take, it took some time and now I do handle edibles, but it, really to, to the audience out there that that term start low and go slow is so true because you don't want to take too much by accident and then be completely turned off from it and then then you don't get any of the benefits it's kind of like when all of a sudden you decide to for the first time drink an entire bottle of wine to yourself and then you're sick and then you don't like wine but 
there's actually a lot of <laughs> taken and moderation and different types, it might respond differently. And so that's, I think that was a big, big lesson learned for me. So for a while I was scared of edibles. <laughs> but yeah, I'm very uh, susceptible to Delta or to 11 hydroxy. And I, I definitely am scared of edibles still to this day. I will have a teensy tiny edible and I will make sure that it is, it is what it says it is you know, much before I start the, what they say, the, it's that, like that train wreck effect. Like by the time you feel it, if you feel it and you've already had too much, it's too late. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. now how long, how long did yours, how long did yours last? How long? I mean, I guess the positive part might be the fact that you got sleepy. Yeah. I went that and that night ended quite rather quickly after that okay. episode. <laughs> Yeah, we, I mean, there was some, there was some sitting there and like getting her together. Like, do you know where you are? You know, getting the waiters, bring us water. And I mean, she drank a few waters and we sat there for quite a while while everybody watched us. I was like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We can sit here all night if you need to. Right. Well, that's awesome too. You had a, you had a great friend and it's those types of scenarios that bring people closer together. I mean, especially when, when you're in an altered state and you need help and you've got someone like Monica that knows what's going on that can can help you through that. That <laughs> Joanna. Sorry, Joanna. <laughs> jo Joanna. Joanna <laughs> I'm gonna keep messing this up. It's I'm okay. just horrific. <laughs> okay. But you me. know, but that instance and like what you were talking about, those are the things that prompted me to start the edutainment piece because you know, you don't know, and I have gotten more than Monica out of my friends into some sticky situations with cannabis, because unlike y'all, I metabolize it very quickly. And I had my, an epigenetic panel done on my endocannabinoid system. So I know that I have fewer CB1 receptors than most people. And so me knowing how it affects me and then seeing what I have accidentally done to, you know, mm -hmm. to other people, it was like, okay, this education piece is crucial for people to really take cannabis seriously as a wellness tool. Right. So question on that, on what you just mentioned, um, having fewer CB1 receptors, does that mean that your tolerance is going to be higher because you're not going to be able to take in as many, yeah, or as much of the cannabinoids? Correct. And, you know, when somebody used to tell me like I, I was high for two days, I would just roll my eyes and think they were a drama queen, but by having it's, that it's process, all possible. well, by having that done, I learned that there are people that metabolize it so slow that they can keep it in their system for two and three days. But well, yeah, you also, I, you also, sorry to cut you off, but you also hear about the people that, um, that do not get affected by edibles at all. Right. I mean, I everybody has one of those like people that. around them somewhere. Yes. Whenever I was um, in Austin and I was experimenting with making my own cannabis oil and I was making edibles and, you know, for South by Southwest or ACL, I'd take orders. And I had this one guy friend that was like, I couldn't make the cookie strong enough for him, but then everybody else I'd sent them on a trip to the moon. And I'm like, I don't understand brother. I think you're broken. So <laughs> it, it's a real thing. <laughs> 